hi guys, welcome to the workshop recorder. My name's Scott and we're gonna do some uh, some chipping today. I've got this little Gaz model AA that I've been working on. And um, yeah, it's a decent kit, I reviewed it in a previous video. Um, it, it's got its shortcomings and some of them will frustrate you, but overall it's pretty good. I wanted to show you some details I've put on here. Um, you can't see it really well in the camera, but these uh, brackets that hold the the board to the frame, this board here, uh, you got to replace those. They don't look good. They come molded in, and they're just not right. So that's just copper wire. You see the bracket that it, that holds the threaded ends together across the top or across the bottom. Uh, if you look at references, you see they put them on both ways. I'm going to put mine across the top, and basically I'm not going to put anything there. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, I'm going to leave the side panels off of the engine compartment and so I'm gonna to have to put some wiring in there and that ought to be kind of fun but uh, the side panels in this kit are just abysmal they need to be replaced with photo edge and I don't have any um, but I've also taken the truck bed and weathered it what I did was I, I rough sanded it in the direction of the grain to take off the the pretty sorry wood grain effect that that uh, Zvezda tries to give you there in their kit it's okay, it's recessed and it's not uh, raised up like some of their previous kits were. But uh, I used hairspray on here and the method I used on here, uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that, but we're gonna do rust and metal this time. Uh, the method is basically, you put your primer on, you put your base color down, in this case I put some wood down and I, I colored the, you can see that there's different colors of wood in there. And uh, then I put a clear coat over it just to give me some extra protection so I don't, you know, sand down into the, the wood paint color and go through that into the primer. I didn't want to do that. Uh, I began to get there just right in there, and it's okay. It gives you a decent, I used a gray primer here, it gives a decent uh, wood color because most wood is, is actually kind of grayish. And um, so I did that with this technique with sandpaper and not a brush and I'll show you that technique uh, today with the rust. What we're going to do is I'm going to start with this hood and we're going to put that typical kind of faded rusted uh, soft edged rust on top of here. We're also going to do the top of the cab which is a little bit textured um, and I don't know if that's going to that going to help us or hinder us but that's what we're going to do. So I've got primer on and let's get started with the hairspray chipping technique. I'll be using Dark Rust by MRP as my base coat. I find this to be a good rusty, uh, good, a good look. So we've got the airbrush loaded up. And I'll just come in here and give this a... A nice undercoat. Now I'm putting it on pretty heavy right here where I'm going to do most of my scratching and rusting because the more paint you have the less likely you are to, to go through it into the primer beneath. I'm also going to do the inside since I've decided to display the, uh, the engine compartment open. I'm at least going to darken up the inside of my what do you call this, a hood, a bonnet? I guess it depends on which side of the ocean you live on. Now again, everything's primed. You always want to paint with this MRP and pretty much any paint over primer, especially if you're going to be doing any kind of abusive work like we're going to be doing here on this, uh, on this kit. There we go. That's our base coat. We've got our colors down and we're going to let it dry and we're going to hairspray that. This is the hairspray I use. It's the cheapest stuff that you can you can get out there. Um, it's it's supposed to. It says all day humidity resistance, which you're not really supposed to get uh, because um, that means it's resistant to water. And if you're doing the water, if you're chipping and using water, you want this uh, hairspray to react to the water. But I haven't found any. I haven't found any trouble using this stuff. And in, in fact, um, it's it's pretty good stuff. And so get you a cheap can of hairspray to last you a long time. I'm gonna use this super gloss clear to seal my paint. And really it's an unnecessary step. Most guys system or procedure, they don't use that. Um, this is pretty tough paint right out of the, 
right out of the airbrush and that's uh, that's usually not a necess necessary step however I'm going to be using sandpaper and um, a semi wet method rather than just a total you know wet method and a toothbrush I'll be using sandpaper so it just gives me an extra little peace of mind to have one more layer of lacquer on here uh, and so that's why I'm going to use the you could use matte you could use whatever uh, I'm going to use this because I have it on hand and again I, I kind of build this up pretty heavy because the whole purpose of this is to add a physical barrier I'm not trying to you know add a barrier like a gloss coat for decals or a, or a coat that uh, you know helps dissimilar materials and paints not mix and craze you know like you might want to put a barrier over certain kinds of paints before you dull coat or add lacquer over acrylic uh, it can be done and that's what a barrier coat comes in handy for but this is an actual physical barrier you could use anything um, you know I'm just trying to put another layer a physical layer on there to help my chipping and scratching stop at the rust layer and not go through now inevitably there will be some errors and mistakes usually those can be uh, incorporated into the weathering but um, yeah this is just an added peace of mind for me I've decided to go ahead and, and uh, prime my panels that I've put on the truck now uh, figuring if I'm going to be doing some chipping I might as well chip those too uh, after all it's the same vehicle um, so yeah that's uh, that's your base coat of primer and next we'll put the rust coat and the clear coat on the truck as well now I'm not too worried about overspray um, this all down here has been painted and a little bit oil weather just for kicks and to kind of get a head start so if I get any overspray down on that, that's okay because I'll be coming back with the green paint anyway. And with weathering, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna all this stuff adds together, and the cumulative effect of lots of little oversprays and little color variations and small attentive details that sometimes happen rather accidentally. Um, can be what they call in the design world a uh, good case of gestalt. Gestalt being the German art term that says the sum of the parts are greater than any of one of the parts. All right, so you can see as it begins to dry how I've put the hairspray, especially on that hood, uh, pretty heavily. And it's going to dry and smooth out, but I, I put it on there uh, about. Uh, I can't really show you me spraying hairspray on, on camera, but you know, just imagine holding it 18 inches or so away and putting on a, a couple of spritzes of hairspray. Um, I did it pretty heavy though because I want um, I want this stuff to serve as a weaker layer in my layering. And so, what we're going to do next is once this dries, is put our our green uh, paint coat on top. And then I'll show you how we're gonna we're gonna get that paint to chip, and we will use some water, but we're gonna mainly use uh, very fine sandpaper, and um, just a very little bit of water to give a smooth edge. And so that's what the hairspray is is for. Um, if you get the hairspray wet underneath the paint, it's gonna come up in chips and big sheets, and and depending on how long you will let that water work. Uh, it'll scratch. You can scratch it. You can peel up big parts of the paint, um, but that's not what I'm going for on this. I want it to come off in small bits, and so the hairspray really just serves as a weaker layer. And so as I sand, the hairspray gives way uh, underneath the paint, and with a little bit of help of water. But uh, it's really the sandpaper that makes the difference. Okay, so they're dry, and I want you to notice when you put hairspray on heavy. Uh, it crazes a bit and so let me grab my little pointer tool along here you can see there's some crazing this white stuff it really showed up on the back here you can see that on the around the window especially where it kind of it was heavy there that's okay you don't have to worry about this with hairspray because you don't see the hairspray uh, the hairspray just serves its function and you shouldn't see any of it and if we do see any of it well that's okay too because this is rust and, and, and corrosion 
and if we could keep some of those effects on there somehow that would actually be kind of cool but just so you know when you put your hairspray on heavy you're going to get little areas of crazing like this and that's okay don't worry um, the fact is, is that it's humid here it's uh, 72 degrees 69 percent humidity uh, just enough humidity in the air uh, to to cause this to craze up when it dries and the reason it does that is it's just like with any kind of a clear coat if the surface is if it's heavy and thick the surface skins over and dries first and for some reason that which is underneath then um, it crazes and does not dry properly so but that's no problem let's move on and paint these now I'm using a home brew and I find that it's a pretty good color for Soviet uh, armor and trucks and things. The reality is, in the Soviet Union in those days, you had all kinds of different greens being called 4BO. That's the official number there. So this is uh, MRP 4BO with a little bit of uh, uh, green in there and a little bit of Soviet green uh, for wheels for MiG-21 type things. And I just mixed it up where it looked right according to photos and according to my handy dandy uh, actual Soviet paint chips off of ammo boxes and various World War II things that uh, I have in my possession. I actually don't believe this one is actually Soviet, but it's Soviet era and it is East Bloc and uh, I think it's Romanian. I don't know what the, I don't know. Anyway, no, Romania doesn't use Cyrillic, probably Bulgarian. Anyway, um, that's a pretty close match and and this and some other ammo boxes that's what I'm going off of now in the area where I want it to rust I'm not going to put my paint on as heavily and so around the edges I'm going to uh, I'm going to be a little more uh, dense along the edges but in the middle where I want it to rust I'm not going to put my paint on super heavy just make it easier when we get started doing the chipping. I did this on my uh, 124th scale Volkswagen and it worked out quite nicely. Actually, some of that crazing in the hairspray is showing through a little bit. And that's nice. I like that. What is it Bob Ross used to say? Happy little accidents. Funny thing about Bob Ross, I, I'm a I'm a creative guy. I was uh, trained as a designer. I grew up as a painter, and I used to watch Bob Ross, and he was considered cheesy back then. To uh, you know, like oh, serious painters. Uh, but he was a funny guy. But before Bob Ross, there was another fellow. Bill something, I forgot his name now, a German guy, and he was actually in the Wehrmacht, and I believe he was a sergeant. And he decided after the war that he was going to paint for a living and not do anything uh, militaristic anymore. And, and he and Bob Ross had kind of a combative relationship between the two of them. things you learn on my channel, huh? Bob Ross was also in the military. I believe he served in Alaska in the Army. Maybe it was the Air Force, I don't know. But it was Alaska that, that uh, caused him to find a love for scenery and mountains and things like that that he used to paint. So there you go. You learn how to chip with hairspray and you learn about Bob Ross. All at the same place. Getting your money's worth today. If you're going to be streaking your, your paint or rust, you can go ahead and start that process by laying down different densities of paint in vertical stripes like that. And that gives you a kind of a head start and an undercoat and uh, establishes some different tonal variations in there. It's a, it's a good practice. This is especially helpful on any kind of structure, ship, ship hull, anything that sits around and corrodes in the elements and rust uh, and is stationary, uh, gravity pulls all that downward and so you can often replicate that with an airbrush alone solely by doing your vertical 
marbling, I guess you could call it. Army National Guard is busy today. So much for that government shutdown, huh? All right, as soon as that uh, airbrush is clean, we're ready to start our work. Now, what I'm gonna do is take some some uh, fine sandpaper. I don't know what grit this is because it's that cheap eBay knockoff stuff just called super fine. But it's probably about a, about a, I don't know, 200, maybe, I don't know how, how you grade this stuff. And I'm just gonna scuff the surface very lightly without water. And what that'll do is open up the paint to allow some, some uh, moisture in there if I need to. And I'll just keep going at it until I start lifting the green paint off of that hairspray underneath. And when I get the effect I want, we're done. Now it looks like I'm going to need to put just a little bit of water. I'm, I'm, I'm just touching a little bit of water on there. Just a little bit. Because as soon there we go. Because as soon as it starts chipping, that hairspray is at work. Now I'm going to dry that with a paper towel because I want to impede that chipping. I'm gonna come back with a, a, a piece of fine sandpaper. This is really polishing sandpaper. Oh, I took off too much. So you see a thick coat like that gives you a lot of chipping. Well, that works, but I'm gonna let that dry now and come back and I'm gonna sand the edges. Let's do some on this uh, this hood here. Again, this is my uh, my rougher grade of fine sandpaper. I'm just gonna come and start working on this hood until I start to see some rust peeking through. And if you go slow with this, take your time you can literally just use sandpaper dry with no water and that hairspray is the weaker layer between these two paint layers our rust underneath then the hairspray and then the green paint on top that hairspray in between is the weaker layer and once you get down to that layer when sanding you're going to be able to uh, so you can see a, a nice smooth transition there from color to color but uh, there we go that's what I'm looking for now if I put water on there I'm going to do what I did on this thing and it's just going to lift the it's just going to lift all that green paint up in larger chunks that I don't want and what I'll do is I'll get a, a really fine piece of sandpaper maybe just a sliver or maybe a piece of sandpaper like this that I've cut and I'll go in and do some edge work as well there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. That's what we're going for. So you can see, maybe you can see, the paint is being sanded off of the hairspray. And that's the look I'm after. Now the only downside to this is if your part has got these sinkholes in it, I tried to fill some of that in or and sand them out. If your part has some sinkholes in it, then you're gonna see them. You're gonna have that show up. And I'll show you what I mean if you're, if you're doing this kind of a sanding method. Uh, on the bed of the truck, you can see here that uh, as I sanded, there's, a, there's a, a line here that runs along and the paint stays down in that recess because it's, it's recessed because they molded these things and as that thicker plastic cooled slower than the surrounding plastic, it, it contracted more. And that's where you get sinkholes from. And uh, well, that kind of looks like maybe there's some nails or bolts in there, so I just left it. But here on a smooth hood, I'm starting to see some of that happen. And I don't like it, but it's gonna have to work for me. Now, here's where you can easily ruin it. Now I've dipped my sponge in some water here, and I'm gonna come along this edge and in some of the places, I'm just gonna kinda of tack, kinda of peck at the paint. And so you can see that gives you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it gives you a gritty chip effect. I'm gonna do some up here against my better judgment. 
and you can start to see, especially where we've already sanded, you can get some really nice effects and heavier chipping. But I'm not rubbing, I'm just kind of dabbing at the paint so that I don't pull off big sheets. And that's a beautiful rust effect right in there. Oop, see, that's when you go too far, you start pulling up big sheets of, of stuff. And that's all right, it's a truck. When rust happens, it spreads according to the content of the metal, the density of the paint, where water pulls up, where people stick their coffee cup, and things rust at different, uh, kind of at random. When we're trying to replicate rust, you want to keep it in the logical areas that you would have rust, but you want to be fairly random with the with the actual effect. And so I'm going to come down through the middle of this region we just messed with and draw my rust downward a little bit into that area. And again, I'm, I'm not dragging my sandpaper so much as I'm stippling with it. And it's giving me a nice effect here. Come back over here now that this has had a chance to dry and see what I can do with this. And with weathering and chipping, you never should freak out about anything. If you get something that happens that doesn't quite meet what you expected, uh, you can either strip the whole thing, that's the beauty of MRP paint, or you can just run with it and adjust uh, on the fly, adjust your plans for weathering and, and just go with it. And here's what we're looking for. Here's what I was after, this soft edge. That's a good looking effect right there. That's what I'm looking for. Now, in real life, you're gonna have guys grabbing up here and things, trees and limbs and things beating on the edges of the truck as it drives through, wherever the heck it's driving through. So I'm gonna go do my stippling again. Now, I suspect because I thought that I had read somewhere that this roof of the, these uh, Gaz AAs was not metal. And so if you're really worried about that, you should check that out before you rust it because it, you know, it could be aluminum under there. Um, but I'm going with metal just because. But you want to make sure that when you're building a model, you know what your materials are so you don't do something silly and have somebody call you out and say, hey man, that's a piece of plastic there. I saw a guy that had uh, weathered a, ooh, there we go. I saw a guy who had weathered a, um, a car and he'd rusted up the fenders on the car, but it turns out in real life those fenders are made of fiberglass. And so it wasn't quite the effect that was realistic that he had uh, on his car there. It looked good, but it was not a proper scale model then. Another thing you can do is go in here with a, a blade or a knife or a needle and get right up against your detail and literally kind of scratch that off. Now you can put scratches. And what happens is when you put a scratch on there, if you put water on there, and I'm again, I'm trying not to do this. Uh, this is probably not the best place to demonstrate this. If you, if you put water on there and it works into that scratch, you'll have a very realistic looking, you know, like a tree scratch or something. So where I scratch there, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, some of that uh, paint's coming off. All right, so there's what we have now. I've got some light rust there. I've got some pretty heavy rust on the back. And you see when you sand, some of that slurry uh, dries on the surface and you've got some of the paint left in there. I'm going to use that to my advantage uh, on this, this side is uh, nice and chipped. Now I didn't get quite the effect I was after uh, but I got a, an effect that I like. And so that's my roof and that will work. That's my hood. That will work. And so this combined with oil washes will give me a nice, uh, a nice end result. So 
So there you go. That's a, that's a pretty decent little effect that uh, I learned uh, when I got back into modeling from a lot of you guys is this hairspray chipping technique and it's really really revolutionized my scale modeling and, and I picked up this little gaz as a uh, as a platform to practice that kind of technique on and I think it's worked out quite well so yeah if you'd like to continue to see the videos here at workshop recorder please subscribe considering uh, uh, hitting that little bell button and be notified and I'm glad you joined me today until next time take care happy modeling bye bye